to you. Welcome back to my channel. It is Sunday, August 25th. Today is the start of the Women in Translation Readathon hosted by Matthew Shirapa and Kendra Winchester. And even though I've been reading Women in Translation books all month, I'd like to participate in the official readathon, which starts today and goes until the end of the month. The first book on my TBR is Can Shoes Love in the New Millennium, forward by Aline Miles and translated from the Chinese by Annalise Finnegan Wasmowen. So, author, forward, contributor and translator all female and they're all credited here on the cover which is one of the requirements of the women in translation readathon matthew is asked that we try to find books where the translator is also female so that's my first pick i also have the summer book by tove jansen and this one is translated from swedish and yes i keep receipts from when i purchase books this is translated by a man but i don't care i read this one last year and i want to reread it and the next book I've identified so far is Greed by Elfrie Jelinek. This one is translated from German by Martin Chalmers, so another male translator. But I'm in the process of reading all three of these books, so these are the three books right now that are on my TBR for this week. And also because I'm still trying to read 31 books in 31 days or as high a number as I can get this month because I think it's impossible at this point. This week, this vlog is also going to include books that are not Women in Translation books. You might see one or more of these also pop up in this vlog, so don't be surprised if this video does not just include Women in Translation reading. This pineapple matches my shirt, but it also reminds me of my childhood. I remember Sunday afternoons, my parents peeling pineapples and us eating them like outside having flashbacks to my childhood right now it's sunday evening i filmed and posted my tbr video for women in translation readathon and i'm starting with love of the new millennium by kan shu this is a series of 11 stories that highlight the different kinds of relationships that are available i suppose in new millennium in China. So this is the book I'm starting my Women in Translation readathon with. It's already Sunday evening. I spent the day reading other things and doing other things. So I'm hoping to make some progress in this book this evening. I started it last week and only got through the first story, but I think I'm going to reread it just so I can remind myself of some of the details that I might have forgotten in the week that has passed. It is Monday morning. It is the last week of our summer vacation. I can't believe the summer is over. We've had a lot of experiences. <laughs> this week we're celebrating. We are heading to Copart to do a Copart walk around. Copart apparently is some auction house for cars. So that's his reward for all the things he's done around the house in the last few weeks. My reward is that we're going to go to the bookstore afterwards so today is a day for us to reward each other and just hang out so i don't know how much reading we'll get done today but stay tuned Don't you mean ah 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 That's terrible. I went the hell route. Huh? I went the hell route. All healthy. Not so healthy when you take half of my price. Zero, two, six, at counter number. Oh, you haven't taken me there. Um. <laughs> it's not as good as this one. Okay. Okay. 
My current magazine wish list includes Flow Magazine, which is about $20 an issue. I'm still not sure if it's worth it, but I love looking in it anyway. And isn't this cool? In flipping through this creative magazine, I see an article about the summer book by Tove Jansen, which is on my TBR for Women in Translation Month. I guess this is a book that I should read when I get home, right? <laughs> yep, books were bought today. I will show them to you later. And now I think we are heading home to read because somehow just going to the bookstore makes you want to read so i think that's what we're gonna do for the rest of the afternoon monday night and like i promised in the bookstore i'm gonna spend some time with tove jansen's the summer book i read this one a couple of years ago but the story didn't stick with me and i'd like to see if i want to explore more from this author so i'd added it to my tbr and then to see it pop up in the magazine i was flipping through not just the author's work, but this specific book means that I should read it today. So I'm going to at least spend an hour reading this one before bed and I'll tell you how I find it this time around. They're as secretive as corn crakes. What's a corn crake? Corn Craig hides in the meadow all alone while the long tails are out beyond the farthest islands an enormous wedding flock singing all through the spring night. I'm going to go listen to the long tails, grandmother said. Okay. So I think this is why I don't remember too much about this book. It's set on a small island in the Gulf of Finland and it's very atmospheric. <clears throat> And the conversations that the little girl and her grandmother have are two-toned in that the grandmother, the little girl thinks that she's coming of age and she's having these deep discussions with her grandmother, but the grandmother is really reporting back to the father. I finished a summer book by Tove Jansen and this was a really good read. I'm giving this a four-star rating. It's set in the summer, like the title says, and it's about a young girl and her grandmother and the relationship that they have, very strong, serious conversations that they have during this experience. The mother has just died, and so these two different generations are bridging this gap that could have formed. And the grandmother speaks to the little girl as though she is capable of understanding. And so they have serious topics of conversation. They talk about God and life and death and hell and science and religion and everything. And the grandmother indulges the little girl. So the girl chastens and chastises her grandmother almost as much as the grandmother does to her. And there are other people who come into their relationship, visitors, friends, neighbors. And because of those interactions, we get to see a little bit of their philosophy about the outside world. And the father is there. The mother has died and the father is there. But he is in the background. He doesn't appear in conversation. But it's such an interesting dynamic between these two different generations. And it's a great story. So I'm giving this a high rating. I don't know what else to pick up from this author, but I'd like to read something else from her in the future. So another book finished for the 31 in 31, another book finished for Women in Translation Readathon and ready to start a new book. Well, maybe ready to finish something else that I've been reading, but one book down, so many more to go. It's Tuesday evening, it's about five o'clock. I just got home and for most of the afternoon, I've been reading A House for Mr. Bezoise by V.S. Naipaul, but I don't really feel like continuing that right now. I'm feeling like something new, and I think I'm going to read this one, because I feel like it's going to be an easy read, and I'm looking for something that I can read in one setting. 330-something pages. Mm, if it's fun, 
I could probably read it. My other option for a quick read. I don't know. I feel like this. I'm going to try this. Let's see what happens. I'm going to give this half an hour and see how like the first 50 pages or so turn out. Starting now. On December 2000. It is a truth universally acknowledged that a girl can go from pauper to princess or princess to pauper in the mere seconds it takes for her to accept her proposal. When Alisba Binat began working at age 20 as an English literature teacher at the British School of Dilipabad, she had thought it would be a temporary solution to the sudden turn of fortune that had seen Mr. Barkat, Bark Binat, and Mrs. Kushbu Pinky Binat and their five daughters, Janazba, Alisba, Marispa, Kitaro, and Lady, move from big city Lahore to backwarded Dilipabad. But here she was, 10 years later, 30 years old, and still in the job she'd grown to love despite its challenges. Her new batch of ninth graders were starting Pride and Prejudice, and their first homework had been to rewrite the opening sentence of Jane Austen's novel. This is sounding promising. It's about 35 minutes later, and I'm about page 40 in this one. I'm at the end of chapter three. And it's set in Pakistan, of course, and it's about, well, the main character is a 30-year-old woman, and she's living in a household with her parents and her four sisters and her mother who wants them to get married ASAP. They've just received the invitation to this wedding and her mother is hoping that at this wedding that at least the two oldest sisters will snag husbands. And so there's discussion about remaining unmarried or not unmarried, remaining single versus doing everything you can to get married. There is a lot of dialogue, which is sometimes a little bit difficult to follow because there are so many characters that we're meeting almost at the same time. It's fun to read, so hopefully I'll get another hour or so into this before I have to do anything else. I'm just vegging out this evening, not much going on. I'm gonna read, <laughs> just reading. <laughs> I still need to read a lot of books before the end of the month, so. I'm not doing anything other than reading for now. I finished Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal. This is a take on Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice set in Pakistan about five sisters. The redeeming qualities about this book, I like the literary comparisons that the author makes. I didn't like the tedium, the colorful language, the cursing, the banal, trite conversations between the characters. So overall, Three star rating. Moving on to something I to else. I'll show you the books that I bought at Barnes and Noble. I got Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This is the Barnes and Noble Classic Edition. I paid half price. So this was originally $7.95. I paid $4. I also got Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen because I have four of her six novels in this edition. And even though I don't love this series as much, I like the font. I like how readable this book is, and it has place for me to make notes because. I originally bought this series when I was annotating my books. The book that I'm missing from the series now is Emma, so the next time I see it, I'll buy it. And I got this one for half of $6.95, so I paid $3.50. And I also bought Upton Sinclair's The Jungle. Upton Sinclair was a muckraker in the early 1900s when these reporters, journalists, were writing articles to change public opinion, to change public policy. So when you look up the term muckraker, you'll definitely find this book and this author listed, and I've never read it. And so I paid half price of $9.95, which is about $5. And so those are the three books that I bought. And Mr. Brown, of course, bought a history book, American Ulysses, A Life of Ulysses, S. Grant, I bought a C. White biography, 10 bucks. I'm not going to read it, so he'll just have to tell me the story. I'm <laughs> going to end this vlog right here. This is a book that I'm currently reading, but I'll tell you about it in my next video. So I hope you'll come back and hear me talk about Can Choose Love in the New Millennium, as well as all the other books that I'm going to be reading for Women in Translation Readathon, as well as my attempt to read 31 books in 31 days on successful attempt. But give me a thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. More videos are coming. I hope you'll be back to watch them. Comment down below if you'd like to talk with me about any of the books I mentioned here and until next time happy reading bye